Hi, Mark from Enchantment of Eternity here for another Thoughts on Sense8. This, this time, Season 2, Episode 7, I have no room in my heart for hate. So, okay, this is this episode was better. This was a more sort of heavy, sort of emotional episode, and I thought it actually worked really, really well. Uh... Oh, I think pretty much all the episodes this season, even the ones that were like tense and suspenseful, they had moments of like levity of these like crazy montages where they're all partying to like rave music or whatever. Even, yeah, yeah, even like the heaviest episodes would have like at least one or two scenes like this. This episode is the first one that felt more sort of you know, more serious, more flat. And I actually appreciated that. Uh, it actually got me to appreciate a lot of the characters more. I absolutely loved, loved the scene where Sun was, um, you know, sitting at her, uh, the you know, her father's grave and all of the sensates got together, sort of tried to make her feel better and to you know, sort of related to her, and they told stories of their own lives and how they were relevant to her. So they all got like in deep into, um, you know, their, you know, the deepest uh, sort of experiences. And I thought it worked very well. Uh, it was it was uh, very effective. And of, you know, speaking of Sun, and then she meets the uh, that other detective guy who, you know, I sort of. Thought it was pretty obvious that he was saying that he was on her side, but he wants her to turn herself in and tell her side of the story, which of course is a bad idea. And speaking of bad ideas, he decides to fight her. He's like, if I win, you turn yourself in. I'm like, what are the, what are the fucking, why does he think he'd win? Of course he's not going to win. I mean, he must even know that he's not going to win. And... When they kissed, I was like, okay. I was part like, okay, this is kind of cool. And part, eh, that's cheesy. That's a bit cliche. Really? They're going to kiss? But <laughs> I don't know. I had mixed feelings about it. I was only thinking part of, partly about that. But then, of course, she knocks him out and runs away. <laughs> so I'm um, sure they'll meet again. But, um, yeah, I think... Well, it's interesting that he that he knows that not just him, but he's saying that a group of them they know in the law they know that her brother is crooked, but they just can't prove it yet. And I take him at face value. I don't think he's lying. I think he he's really on her side. Um, so I yeah, I want to see more of that as well. But also, it was really interesting this episode with Kala and her husband. And he's saying that they just, like, throw the, you know, have the shitty drugs that aren't really tested or don't really work or expired or whatever. And they just give them away to poor countries. And he's like, oh, who cares? You're just far away places. They're not close to here. It doesn't bother us. Uh, and, of course, you know, he doesn't understand the irony of that because she's, like, connected to people around the world. And then he mentions, like, Africa. And then, of course, Capius is there. And just like, is it Kenya? He's like, yeah, maybe. I'm like, that? That was pretty powerful. Like, so because she, you know, to him, it's just a faraway place. But to her, she's connected to someone who is directly affected by it. So that sort of, that sort of, um, you know, that drives home the point that nothing is like a faraway place. That we're all connected. And of course, that is the point of the whole show. And I think this show does it well. And I think it did it very well in that scene. Now, the Leto stuff... It's, it's, it's pretty good as well, but I think it's starting to get repetitive. Uh, so I hope they, they get out of this circle, the cycle that there is with his storyline, where he, you know, he feels great for coming out, and then he gets discriminated against, and then he feels horrible. Like, in that scene, when he went to his agent, he was like, I feel so great! Oh, this is it! 5,000 views! Woo! And he talks before letting them speak. It's so obvious. Was it? It's so cliche. I mean, can he really be that stupid when he goes in and they're like, oh, they're very like sad to see him. They're like, oh, what are you doing here? You know, at the very least, he should let them talk first before going, oh, blah, 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 and interrupting them. Uh, that seems like a TV cliche 
to me like oh you know people are so excited and always talking and like oh it's so great but the other person has some like bad news saying oh we're firing you or we're breaking up or in this case we're you know letting you go <laughs> whatever not being your agent anymore uh, it's it's kind of obvious it's a big cliche um but of course i gotta talk about the big thing which is uh riley her trip to chicago that's very tense very intense very exciting very suspenseful is that again talking about great scenes seeing that scene where will was connecting with his old body cop uh buddy cop friend who's like pissed at him because he disappeared for a year without telling him and uh he was able to say look I didn't tell you because I care about you. I care about your family. I don't want you to get in trouble. I don't want you to lose your job. And it was just, that was another very touching scene. This is a very, yeah, it was a very effective scene. And of course, like Riley going into that, you know, the church where Angelica was uh, to meet this person, to give her more information. And it was very, very suspenseful, like very intense. Like I was right there with Will, like freaking out. Is it safe? It seems very creepy. Uh, but she, yeah, she learned some more uh, vital, important information. And of course, we also have that shooting, which they, they say um, it was Todd who was like the son or whatever, I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen the last couple of episodes, but he's connected to those, to, to the sensates of the past. And, but of course, it sounded like in this episode they were saying that Whispers was controlling Todd. And of course they're making Whispers out to be this big, even bigger villain. So now I kind of doubting my predictions, kind of double backing on my predictions that I made earlier that Whispers would be off the show by season two. Maybe not. Maybe they're making out because they seem to be building him up as this huge evil guy. Uh, so maybe they're just, he's here to stay for the rest of the, the series. I personally would prefer now, but whatever. I mean, I'm not going to say it's going to suck if they do that, I think they could still make it work. So, yeah, I really like this episode. I I don't know. I don't know. I just saw it. Of course, I'm, I don't know if I'm ready to say it's my favorite of the uh, entire you know sh season, but it's up there. It, it, I it really it was really like heavy, uh, and I really enjoyed uh, the change in tone, especially from last week's episode, which. Or the constant bombardment of all the montages to rave music. I just got to get a bit stuck. It's, it's okay every once in a while, but they've been overdoing it this season. And so it was great to have a, a more down-to-earth episode. So yeah, so that's my thoughts on episode 7. Really enjoyed it. I'll be back for episode 8, so be sure to check out my channel, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.